Here is the most important points to take away from this. First of all, and this is a uh, new concept for some people that take these workshops, CAS is not a medical diagnosis. It's a label for a speech disorder. I don't know how it got out there that it was a medical diagnosis. A proxy of speech in adults that have a stroke is a speech disorder. The necrosis due to the hemorrhage or the ischemia, that's the medical diagnosis. The resulting impairment is a speech disorder. Nobody has a problem with stuttering being a speech disorder or even dysarthria being a speech disorder. Nobody says dysarthria is a medical diagnosis. It's a consequence of a medical diagnosis. CAS is a neurologic inefficiency, but lots of times we can't even pinpoint what that is. It doesn't show up on an MRI or an EEG or any kind of neuroimaging. Occasionally it is acquired due to neonatal stroke or, or stroke in a young child or anoxia or brain injury. So sometimes it's acquired apraxia. And what we do will depend on at what age and, and speech, level of speech development they're at when the injury occurs. But at any rate, Fred Darley and Kathy Yoss, in a seminal article in the late 70s, uh, wrote, really coined this term because Fred Darley had done all this work and in fact coined the term apraxia of speech in 1969 at a meeting in Paris. Because at Mayo, over many years, he had learned, he had observed that there were a number of people that had strokes that had aphasia, but did not have dysarthria, but had this weird speech impairment that was not a language problem. And he used the term apraxia because it was very reminiscent in its characteristics of limb praxis problems that we saw in patients. And we've come to use that term without any difficulty in adults, although it took 20 years. And we're having the same problem with CAS. Because children that have CAS also have phonologic impairment, because if your motor system is inefficient, you can't practice what you need to practice to learn the rule-governed system of phonology for your language, right? It undermines their ability to learn that. So, of course, they're going to have phonologic impairment. Or, and or, if one system goes awry, why wouldn't more than one? So it's just a label for a speech disorder. And that's a very important thing to tell parents. 